Welcome back. It's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today, we are featuring uh, the Superman of Earth 3, also known as Ultraman. And this comes from McFarlane Toys, and it's part of the DC Multiverse line. Alright, so... I did not know this action figure was coming out. Um, maybe at one point in time I did and just forgot about it. But I was at my local Target today. And today is April 1st, 2022. And um, they were restocking the shelves in the action figure aisle. And there was this box that was set aside. And it was opened. It looked like someone was kind of already, already went through it. And I took a peek and I found this guy in here. Um... I'm a big fan of Ultraman, uh, more so from this story. Um, this is the graphic novel uh, JLA Earth 2, um, written by Grant Morrison and illustrated by Frank Quitely. I love this story. It was recommended to me um, by one of my college instructors, and that, that was like a lifetime ago. It's a great book. It highlights the crime syndicate of America, and Ultraman's a character in this. Um, this was a fun period of time for the Justice League back in, I think it was like the late 90s or maybe early 2000s. Um, I can't remember exactly. But yeah, this is a great story. And when I saw this figure, I had to have it because for one, it's Ultraman. And then um, number two, it's part of the... Um, for the Build-A-Figure, it's Starro the Conqueror. Now, I already... Um, know that I'm, it's going to be impossible to find the rest of the pieces for this guy. But I am pretty stoked that it at least comes with one of the small like baby Starros right there. So I'm stoked on that. Um, the figure looks great. You know, I think this is a great um, representation of Ultraman. I think he looks awesome. And this Build-A-Figure piece here gets me really excited at, at what the finished piece might look like. It looks crazy. So yeah, this is Superman of... Earth 3 Crime Syndicate. He's also known as Ultraman. Um, I have a feeling the reason why I didn't call him Ultraman is more so like, you know, branding. I think just based on name recognition, like the average person knows who Superman is. You know, if they label this Ultraman, you know, some people, eh, you know, they're not too all familiar with, um, you know, that end of the DC universe. But, you know, you label him Superman and, you know, parents might even jump on this. It's like, oh, it looks like Superman. It must be Superman. Alright, so um, this looks awesome. I love this photo. It looks crazy. It's Ultraman taking on Starro. Uh, the completed Starro looks so cool. And then here's um, the assembly for it. I gotta see the completed toy in person because this almost looks very seamless. And then here's some of the other figures in the wave. As you noticed, um, it looks like each one has dates. So this one was this was supposed to have come out uh, uh, January of 2022. For me, this is the first time I've seen it. You know, maybe it went under the radar and I missed it the first time it was out. I don't know. Or maybe it's late. Um, and in April uh, 2002, um, the, all the rest of the characters are silhouetted out. So I'm guessing the rest are probably crime syndicate members. If I had to guess, this is probably Ultraman's wife. Um, what's her name? Superwoman, I think. And the other ones, uh, can't really tell with a silhouette. You know, maybe it's any one of the crime syndicate members. Um, you know, like maybe like Owlman or Power Ring or whatever. Okay, so let's get started. Um, take this guy out. Alright, so don't forget there's the trading cart in the box and also the figure stand. 
Uh, first impressions of Ultraman while he's still in the box or still on the tray. He looks awesome. But I gotta admit, I keep on looking at this. The Starro looks friggin' phenomenal. Um, I mean, look at that. That looks so friggin' cool. The detail on this thing is amazing. Yeah, I might, I might have to accept the fact now that I might not be able to complete this. You know, the last thing I want to do is resort to eBay or the secondary market to find the rest of these pieces uh, to put them together. There's like a piece of dust that won't come off. Um, let's wait until we get it off. Yeah, there's like a little flake of dust. It won't come off. I can't take it off. No matter how hard I try, it won't. There you go. Yeah, so the Build-A-Figure piece alone is crazy. I really want to see the completed um, Starro. Uh, the ironic thing with this, looking at it, it's <laughs> we're very fortunate that Starro doesn't suffer from the side eye syndrome that all the McFarlane toy figures have lately. You know, most of the McFarlane toys figures, for some reason, um, all the characters are not looking straight. They're always looking like to the left or to the right. But man, look at the, the paint application on this and the texturing. This looks insane. I want this thing so bad. For me, this is worth the price of admission alone. As cool as the Ultraman figure looks, I'm so stoked just to have one of the... Um, Wow, that's awesome. So it's like one of those Starro Baby kind of deals. In a perfect world, I'd love it if they made the character um, Jaro, which is kind of like Batman's adopted Starro son, if you read the Batman comic books. Uh, or I think he was, in, he was in Justice League, I take it back. So Jaro was a character that was a piece of Starro, and Batman kept him in a jar. That's why he's called Jaro. And Jaro kind of like, um, you know, he kept on calling Bruce dad and he kind of imagined himself being the next Robin. It was really cute. But this is awesome. Look how wicked this is. Under The detail underneath is insane. It has all the suction cups. It has the teeth. Man, this is wild. I like this a lot. All right, let's get to the main event here. Let's take a look at um, Ultraman. I really don't understand why some of these McFarlane figures, how come, like, for some figures, like, for example, Aquaman, he barely had any of these plastic ties on him, where Superman has them, like, everywhere. It's, it's annoying. It takes, it takes a while to take out. All right, I gotta say that I'm liking this um, cape material. Um, it's very soft, it's very flexible, as you can see. 
It feels a little thick in some areas, like towards the bottom, it feels a little bit thicker, but it's nice and flexible. It might be a, a little weighty though. So, you know, I'm not sure how well this figure would stand um, with the weight of this cape. Let's move these guys aside. All right, I love the face sculpts. Just looking at it, it's awesome. Um, so he's kind of missing the spit curl on the front of his head, but you know, this is Ultraman, so I don't necessarily think he needs it. Um, his eyes are glowing red, like he's about to shoot lasers at someone. Um, as awesome as his face sculpt is, I kind of feel like he could look a little bit more meaner. You know, all the crime syndicate members, they're very vile, they're very corrupt. But man, this is a great looking head though. Um, I'd, all, I'd be tempted to say that this head would make an excellent Bruce Wayne head. You know, you just recolor the eyes, but you know, it has the kind of like Bruce Wayne jaw. Yeah, I think this would make a much better uh, Batman Bruce Wayne head than Ultraman, but it, it looks so badass though. Just look at that. Really nice. The cool thing about him having the glowing red eyes is that he doesn't he's not gonna have that side eye problem. Um the costume itself, it's a little on the bare side. There's no like micro texture or anything. But there is, you know, some wrinkles and folds sculpted onto it. Immediately one of the things that kind of like um is bothering me with this figure is that the mid torso cut, it's it feels like it's coming a little low and the only reason why I say that because it feels like the the weight the lower um, body area feels like the waist is too high so it seems like they're converging a little bit too close together and the upper torso it's really gappy as you can see right there so it, it feels like it's not as seamless looking as it could look you know with the giant gap, it casts a shadow underneath, and it just it just it just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. But it's a really nice looking figure. The cape is well done. Um, again, it, like I've said in previous videos, I would have prefer it if the cape was much more in a neutral stance. It seems like for me, it's a little bit excessive. Um, they easily could have trimmed off maybe like a third of the cape. And I mean, that'd come in handy also because it would lighten the weight of the figure. But it is dynamic looking. You know, if you're having the figure standing up like, you know, in a diorama or pretending it's on top of a building, looks kind of cool how it's kind of flowing, especially with his hair. Excellent figure, really nice. Uh, not a whole lot going on in the details, but, you know, that's the nature of the costume. Let's find some photos of here of Ultraman. Um, try not to spoil the book. Uh, there we go. Here's one picture of Ultraman. Um, as you can see, he's using his heat vision, the red eyes like this guy has. So one thing I noticed is that if, if this might be uh, the artist's interpretation, or maybe it's, let me double check, make sure I'm right on this. Yeah, so Ultraman in this book, um, he actually has gloves on. As you can see here, his arms are completely blue and his hands are blue. Whereas on the figure, you know, his hands are exposed. But that, for me, that's very forgivable. Um, also, Ultraman, at least for this artist's interpretation of it, he has the logo on the back of the cape, uh, much like Superman, whereas this one does not. Um, Articulation-wise, this guy's head rotates. 
Um, will he look down? Um, doesn't really look down. Will he look up? All right, that's a big plus right there. Um, it's awesome when you get a Superman figure that can actually look up. So you could get him in flying poses. It would it would be nice if they gave um, hand options, like if he had hands that were kind of like in flying mode. Uh, but this guy, he just has them fists out. Um, his back and arch, I think. Yeah, his really, really nice arch on his back. So if you want to recreate like a flying pose, you could. Like that looks really nice. Really wonderful flying pose. Yeah. So you, you, that's a big plus for me. You know, if, if you get a Superman figure and he can like recreate a really nice flying pose, that's awesome. You know, I, t I was reviewing the Aquaman figure um, recently and his head doesn't tilt back. And I kind of felt that was a negative because especially if you want to get him in a swimming pose or like he's like, you know, swooping underwater. But yeah, this is great. If you're into fig photography, this would be an excellent piece. Like I said, I kind of wish this guy looked a little bit more vile and mean. Um, he still looks kind of like on the nicer side. You know, the Justice or the Crime Syndicate of America, they're like... You know, they're not, they're not like our Justice League. They're all like villains. And this looks so friggin' awesome. Um, the arms can rotate. As you can see, there's the butterfly. About that much motion. Arms go out. Bicep cut right there. So outward, bicep cut. Uh, double pinned elbows. They do an okay job also of making sure that the joint here kind of conforms to the shape of the bicep and the forearm. Uh, the tennis ball wrist, it's kind of there. It's not really hidden that well. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I do have an issue with the mid-torso cut. It's a little bit gappy, and it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. But it does allow for crunching forward and arching back which is awesome I mean just look at that you can really get get crazy um, there is a waist swivel his legs could kick out they could kick up um, his knees are double pinned and he also has ankle articulation and toe articulation yeah overall very solid figure uh, for me if I had to rate this figure on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, oh man. I like this a lot, especially getting him in the flight poses that we got him in. But I, I do feel that they could have done a cleaner job on the, the mid-torso. Uh, it would have been nice if he had blue hands, like in this comic. But then again, I'm not sure if um, this is based off another artist's interpretation where he actually has the exposed hands. Um, he could look, the face sculpt's amazing, but he could look a little bit meaner. That's my one kind of big gripe. But otherwise, you're looking at an almost flawless figure, in my opinion, especially for a Superman one. Uh, for me, easy nine. Um, at the lowest, maybe an eight and a half, but man, yeah, easy nine. I think this figure is fantastic. It's amazing. Um, yeah. Great, great interpretation of Ultraman. All right, so let's wrap this video up. Once again, my name is Lou. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for your continued likes, comments, and support. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I will see you at the next one. All right, later.